and these will be on the web so you can go through them. But, but we have talked about already, we've talked about that uh, for any particular situation you can think of a closed system or you can think of an open system if, if there's energy exchanges. <clears throat> and, and one of the possibilities is, well, this ball dropping. I can think of my physical system as the ball. So there's an interaction from the outside. The earth pulls down on the ball and the ball moves in the direction that the earth's pulling down. So there's a force on the, on the ball by the earth, straight down. I'm going to call upward pos the positive direction. That's a standard what thing to do and usually when you draw the y-axis you call it positive vertical uh, upward. So I'm going to just go with that for right now. If, I, if vertically upward is positive then the force by the earth which is downward is negative. Just that negative sign is is just sitting there because the force by the earth is downward and I've decided to call it upward positive so downward has to be negative direction. It turns out that the force by the earth is just the mass of the object times the gravitational field of the earth. I, I don't know why I wrote G is 9.8. I'm going to keep calling G 10 because it's easier to multiply, but for some reason I wrote 9.8, so round that off. So if that's the force on this object, when I let go, it's the only force on the object. Before I let go, my hands are still pull it, pushing on it too. When I let go, before it hits the ground, there's only one force on the object and that's the force of the earth pulling it down. That force right there. So the work, the energy added by that interaction with the earth is the force by the earth times the distance it moves. So that's work. The force times the distance it moves. So if the distance it moves is delta y, because I called y the positive, the, the vertical variable, y is the height of the object, uh, the force is, is negative, the mass times g, and the change in the height, that's the work that's done. And so the, if this is an open system, the energy that changes when you do work on that object, you can see that the object's moving faster. We don't have to worry about other interactions like air resistance when we have a tennis ball like that that's moving fairly slowly. So the change in kinetic, the change in the total energy is just the change in kinetic energy. There's no heat added, but there's an external force pulling it downward, so there's work done. And so I could say the change in kinetic energy is the work done on the ball. It's negative mg delta y. As y gets smaller, delta y is a negative number. The change in y is a negative number. So delta Ke is a positive number. That's treating that situation, that, physical, that, that situation with the ball dropping, where the physical system is the tennis ball, so it's an open, uh, open system. Energy is added because work is done because the earth is pulling down on it from the outside. Closed system. Include everything. Include all the things that are interacting. What does the ball interact with? Interacts with the earth. Okay, let's include the earth. Since the earth is part of our physical system and the ball, then there's an interaction energy that we have to worry about, the potential energy. Potential energy is an interaction energy between two things in our system. Both the earth and the ball are in our system and so the gravitational potential energy is something we have to worry about. It's a closed system so the total ch change in the total energy is zero and you find out that the change in the kinetic energy plus the change in the gravitational potential energy is zero and those two are the same equation. So open system, closed system, it doesn't matter. You end up with the same result. And there's a reason why you ended up with the same result. 
And I'm just going to go right to the reason. That's because the force, the way you describe an interaction with forces is re closely related to the way you describe an interaction with potential energies. I wrote it as a derivative because I'm going to ask you about slopes and I know that you all have taken calculus and know that the derivative of some function is just the slope of a function, of that function at whatever point you care about. But I really want you to think of dPE as the change in potential energy. D in this, the way I'd like you to think about it, this little differential D this is just a very very small delta PE. It's a tiny little change. It's a change but it's a differential change or it's a infinitesimal change or people use a lot of different words for it. dy is a change in the height. It's just a really, really small one. Infinitesimally small. You take the limit as, the, as it goes to zero, in fact. But they are changes. This is the change in one thing divided by the change in another. And that's why it ends up being a slope when you look on a graph. That's why the derivative is the slope of, a, of the graph. Um, so I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. The only thing I want to add to this is something I mentioned last time and I put it in here. There's a minus sign sitting there. I don't put that minus sign in there because I'm worried about whether you write minus or not. <laughs> I put that minus sign in there to remind you that a force always acts in the direction that decreases the potential energy. So I mentioned this last time. You can always remember it if you remember gravity because everybody knows the direction of the force of gravity. The force of the Earth's gravity on this ball is downward. The direction that the gravitational potential energy decreases is straight down. The gravitational potential energy gets smaller and smaller as you go down. Forces always act to decrease potential energy. So I'll say that a few more times just to remind you as I'm asking these questions. But I think you've already done this one. Which was the best graph of potential, uh, spring potential energy versus height? The spring potential energy versus height and E was the best one? It turned out. E was the best one because it had a, a minimum potential energy at an equilibrium point and the potential energy went up. The potential energy got higher if you pulled it down away from equilibrium and the potential energy got higher if you pushed it up away from equilibrium. So stretching or compressing the spring does the same thing. So now I'm going to ask you about calculus and physics and potential energies and interactions and things like that. Um, which of these graphs does not have a positive slope anywhere? Talk about it all you want. I'll give you a minute. Talking about slopes of things, which of these graphs does not have a positive slope anywhere? All right, so everybody got this right. I'm not going to... I'm not going to continue with it. So, so here's the, uh, where, where I ask you about force. The force that represents the interaction between two objects always acts in the direction of decreasing potential energy of that interaction. So, so that's something I said before. I said I would say it again. I forgot that I actually wrote it in. Uh, it's written in there for you. Which of these graphs represents a force that is always directed upward. An upward force. So all of these are graphs of energy. 
versus height. I forgot to say that in here, but they're the same graphs I was showing you before. The, the height is on the horizontal graph, or is on the horizontal axis, and energy is on the vertical axis. So they're all potential energy graphs versus height. Which of these graphs represents a force that's always directed upward? A force pushing upward. Forces always act in a direction that decreases the potential energy. 